Welcome to the Copper King Mine and Road. Today we're going to talk about constructing the Carfork Bridge or A-Line Bridge that was up in Bingham Canyon. So stay tuned. Constructing the Carfork Bridge, also referred to as the A-Line Bridge. The Carfork Bridge was 680 feet long and 225 feet high and it was a curved steel bridge. It was completed June 1911. It was the last of three large viaducts that was part of the Bingham and Garfield Railroad. Open cut operations started in 1906. At the time, two companies were digging away at the same mountain, Boston Consolidated on top and Utah Copper on the bottom. Both companies contracted with Denver Rio Grande Railroad to ship their ores to the mills, some 16 miles from the mine. In response, Denver Rio Grande will build the low grade line, or we called it the high line. But this line will struggle from the beginning. It just couldn't keep up with the volume of ore being dug out of the mine. Remember, they were using large steam shovels. Now these two companies will merge in 1910, becoming Utah Copper. So on January 2nd, 1907, just one year and six months after the first train on the Denver Rio Grande low grade line delivered ore to the mills, Utah Copper incorporated Bingham and Garfield Railroad, an independent line to haul the ore. Construction began April 22nd, 1910. We are lucky to have a few pictures of them constructing this bridge, this large viaduct. The photos speak volumes of how the construction was accomplished. I also have some documents talking about issues the contractor was having with the Piers Foundations. I find this extremely interesting when you can find detailed information on the subject. The first letter dated September 3rd, 1910 it was a Western Union telegram, night letter. Maybe there's some urgency in the matter. Anyway, it talks about not finding solid foundation, even after drilling 20 feet down, asking for recommendations. The letter addressed to Ira G. Hendrick, engineer. It also states that the bridge will probably be used for 30 years. Keep that in mind. Anyway, the second letter, a return letter dated September 6, 1910, addressed to R.C. Gimmel, Assistant General Manager of Bingham and Garfield Railway. Now, I can't tell who signed the letter, but it was from Hendrick and Cochran, engineers from Kansas City, Missouri. Now, check out the letterhead. I thought that was pretty cool. The letter talks about comparing concrete to wood, piers, cost, and the lasting ability. Best to reach solid rock, even going down 30 to 50 feet. Advise boring holes to determine solid rock, even if it caused delays. If timber piles are used, they should be creosote number 16, redwood or cedar. That the top pedestals be made 5 foot square concrete. They stated that this was their best answer with the limited information the chief engineer had on hand. Now we find what the solution was with the letter about the Dry Fork Bridge construction. Now this was dated November 4th, 1910, and it stated, adopting the same method for foundations used on the Car Fork Bridge, sinking a pit nine foot square and filling it with solid concrete. The depth of the Car Fork Pier was 62 feet with a 16-foot pedestal block above ground. Here's a picture of that pedestal block. I have a couple of pictures of that. So that's the construction of the bridge, but I have a lot of pictures of this car fork or A-line bridge. So let's take a minute and look at some of these great photos of this car fork bridge. The first ore train on that B&G line was September 14th. 1911. Here's a picture of that first ore train. So I thought it was pretty neat. This picture shows the Denver Rio Grande low grade line to the right and then 
Right across the canyon is the B&G line. They came in at the same level, the 6340 level. Here's a supply train on that Car Fork Bridge. In this picture, you can see the Car Fork Bridge in the background, top right, Denver Rio Grande's Cupram Yard. That's where the low grade line terminated. Trains in the mine had to work their way down to this yard. You see bottom right, there's a Shea locomotive used on some of the higher mines. Here's a panoramic view of the B&G yard. And you can see the Carfort Bridge there to the right. And the next few pictures were taken in 1912. This panoramic view was taken from the top of the office building. Just more pictures of that Carfort Bridge. Just love these pictures. This one's looking from the opposite direction down the canyon. You see that curve on that bridge and to the right is the old shops they had over there, the train shops. This picture was taken in 1923. This is a Ron Fox picture. And this picture was taken in 1926. Here's another panoramic view taken in 1926 and the Carfork Bridge is to the left in the center there. And you, if you look to the right, you can see that straight Markham Bridge. We had a program on that Markham Bridge also. Then another panoramic view of the mine to the left and that bridge in the center of the picture, the Carfork Bridge. Just love these great big panoramic shots they took. Here's another one of that Carfork Bridge in the center of the picture. This is an interesting picture. This is where the Sawmut Mill was. This is where they'll build the Gimmel Club. The kids are all standing around right there getting their picture taken. You can see the bridge supports in the background. This picture was taken in 1930 of the Carfork Bridge. And then this next one, the Carfork Bridge is there to the right, and this was taken in 1934. This one's looking down Carfort Canyon to the bridge. This was taken in 1938. Then we have quite a few pictures taken around 1942, and they are found in the Library of Congress. So there's quite a few of these. This is during World War II. See the ore trains going across the bridge. Here's one with an electric motor that came from the pit, and then the big uh, steam engine that went out to the mills. So quite a few pictures from the Library of Congress here. Here's an interesting picture. This was taken in the 30s sometimes. And to the right, you can see they had a turntable up in B&G Yard at one time. They actually took that out to make more room up there. That building right there is warehouse number one. Then we have some beautiful pictures from the Don Strack collection. They are found at utahrails.net. That's his website. Some of these pictures you can see all the way up Carfort Canyon. You see all the bridges up in Carfort Canyon. Those are just really some nice clear pictures of that Carfort Bridge. Then he also has some nice colored, the first colored pictures of the mine. You see the Carfort Bridge and the also the Markham Bridge in this picture. So the first colored pictures of the Carford Bridge in the mine. Note to the right there, the boneyard with the old little steam engines in it. Then this next picture is a real close up of that steam engine to the right there. This picture is taken in 1940, this panoramic view looking down on it. Look at this one, this is the overhead shot. And to the right is the Carfort Bridge, and then to the left, to the bottom, is the Markham Bridge, that straight Markham Bridge. I thought that was kind of neat. Then just some more pictures of the Carfort A-Line Bridge. Oh, I like this one. This is looking down the canyon, there's an old car sitting there, and the woman comes to get in the car. Well, that was pretty fun. 
Anyway, this is the Carfork Bridge. Here's one with the, all the steel work right here. And that to the right is the heat plant one. And it went up to the shops. Here's a picture of that heat plant and the iron work of the bridge right there. Just more pictures. It's kind of hard to date some of these pictures, and I don't really have them in order, but. This is looking down on the Carfort Bridge from Carfort Canyon. And this is looking across the canyon to Carfort Bridge. Oh, I like this colored picture right here. See the cloth clotheslines hanging across the canyon. Carfort Bridge in the background. Oh, I also like this one. This is from street level looking up to that Carfort Bridge, and there's a train right in the middle of it. Here's a 1940 picture of it. Here's a Colorado postcard they made up that Carfort Bridge. Then some more colored pictures of the bridge. This picture shows the mine in the background and it's coming this way. Note the shop there to the left. And then the next picture is that shop is gone. Now they won't even use this bridge or this route anymore because they'll build the Copperton Low Line in 1948. And so a few more pictures of that shop being gone. Now this picture is from uh, Cheryl Strogan, one of the last colored pictures of the Carfort Bridge. So you can see these last few pictures there. The days are numbered on this bridge. And then the last two pictures I have it shows the bridge is taken down. The Carfort Bridge will be demolished April 1957. Now there making it 46 years of use instead of the 30 they thought it was going to last for so it wasn't used for 46 years so that's the carfork bridge or a-line bridge bingham canyon mine